Hi, I'm Cher Kaufman. Welcome to The Drawing Desk. Today we're going to be talking about water-soluble markers on your actual coloring book pages. Now I've already done a video that talks about techniques for water-soluble markers and it's called How to Color with Water-Soluble Markers. And one way to go and find out if you're looking at the right one, it's going to be on this project. And I've done a complete video on techniques specifically for the uses and, and how to work with them in, in all their quirky ways. Today is not going to be about the techniques. Today we're actually going to be talking about how to prepare your papers that are not on um, mixed media paper or a really heavy cardstock. It's going to be whatever you're getting in your coloring books, which is not usually ready for something that, that is a lot of water. Um, or water-based. So find your favorite coloring book, like the Artful Mandala, pick out a page. We're going to help you prepare it. We're going to be using a product called Gesso today. And I'm going to show you a project that is from start to finish on what it's like to work with white gesso. And at the end, we'll see a wonderful project to inspire you. So let's go. Okay, so to get started, we're going to start with gesso. Gesso comes in white and clear, and I'm going to use this little spongy paintbrush. You can use squeegees. I've seen people use um, like a credit card, the edge of a credit card that they're no longer using. Don't use one that's active. <laughs> but something along those lines where you can create a little bit of pressure and smoothness but let me show you what the gesso actually looks like. So gesso is a thick or thin, depending on the brand, product that you can apply to paper that makes it a little bit more on the waterproof side. It's water resistance and you can use water-based products. So here I'm gonna dip a little bit of this gesso out onto just one of these little plastic plates that I use specifically for art projects. Now this is not some of the thickest gesso I've seen. There are some that's really, really thick, which is really good for texture if you want to do journaling or anything along those lines. And it will work if I want to add texture to my page. However, I actually want it a little bit thinner. So I'm going to use a little bit of water from this tiny little water spray that actually, I think I got this with um, the Tombow um, water markers can't remember where I got it, but it's come in handy for tiny projects like this or specific uses. And I'm just going to mix that water in. So you basically are diluting it or thinning it out. And you can do this with acrylic paint also. But you just want to be careful if you're if you're doing that with acrylic paint, you probably want to stick with white. Um, for this project, I just grabbed what was available. Again, I'm just using what I have. I encourage people to just start with what they have. You don't have to go and buy a whole bunch of things. So what happens is that as I begin to apply this to my paper, you're going to notice also that it changes the way those black lines look on the paper because it's white and it's covering it. If you don't want that and you want to be able to still see your real dark lines or your template of whatever you're working on, or if you are doing journaling and you want to still see your textures underneath, then you'd probably want to do a clear gesso as opposed to the white gesso. But white gesso is, is interesting because it allows you to see a little bit about where you've put it and it can kind of add a nostalgic or antiquing look to some things because it, it, it kind of fades away the harsher darker lines. The other thing that I like with the white gesso for this kind of activity, which I don't have any particular investment that's going to turn out a certain way, is that it just lets me see where I've applied it. And I can tell by my strokes that there are some places where it's a little thicker and a little thinner in some places. And we're just going to cover the whole plate, or the whole paper. And you'll also notice in a second, I'll, I'll show you a close up here that there's a little bit of texture to what this soft sponge is doing to the paper. Also, you can see those um, side to side or up and down, depending on which direction the paper is. 
And also what I've done is if there were places where I could clearly see that I did not apply enough gesso and I wanted it to be covered, I went back and did a little bit of touch up. The other thing to notice with gesso is that there's an unpredictability if you don't cover your paper completely where whatever your wet medium is can actually make contact with the paper and seep through and it will change how it looks. So it'll be interesting to see how I covered, how well I covered it. Um, I don't really care if it's completely covered. I don't mind if there's a few little places that go in. What I do care in this project is that it is mostly covered, that I have the ability to do multiple layers of wet media, in this case the water-based markers. So what I'm looking at here is definitely places that are a little bit thicker, a little bit uh, thinner in some places, and that's okay. That's okay. The idea is I just want to kind of cover most of it. All right, so just to show you here, yeah, I can see that there's going to be a little bit of texture that comes through, so it'll be interesting. It's mostly smooth. What I'm seeing here, some places are drying faster than others, which means that the gesso that I applied is going to be a little bit thicker in some places. Now, if you have one of those fancy art um, dryers that people use in journaling, you can go do that. What I did is I just took a quick break and went to go use my hair dryer and just dried it that way. So now we're looking at something that's completely dry and I can still see there's a little bit of texture and I can definitely see where I applied a little bit thicker gesso in some places and a little bit thinner because those black lines are definitely the telltale of how much gesso was applied. So let's talk about other tools that we use here. So I like to use brushes when I'm doing water color markers. And one of the things you can do is you can do this all in one where you add a little bit of water to the reservoir in the back and you have different brush sizes. I don't necessarily use these. The idea is that you add a little bit of water to that and then you can put pressure and the pressure uh, that you're applying to the back reservoir allows the amount of water, controlled amount of water to go to the brush and it dampens the brush and then you can use that to spread water around on your paper. I actually prefer to have even more control over that <laughs> and so I don't use these. And uh, while they're great, and I know a lot of people really love them, if you do decide to use these, make sure that you, at the end of your session, you dump the water because what can happen is that if you don't let those air dry, you can actually develop fungus and mold on the inside and it can be pretty gross. So you wanna make sure that your tools are handled well and they'll last you a long time. So clean them if you're gonna be using them. I don't use them. I like to use these brushes that were in probably the cheapest package I could find at one of the art supply stores in a small little container with just a very little bit of water. I don't need a lot of water, Plus, I can always use my little spray. The, my brush of choice is actually the smallest of all of these brushes. I like that I can get into small spaces and I have a lot of control of what I'm using. So these are my two, the little spray bottle and the tiny little brush. Those are the things that I use the most. Occasionally, I'll go to a bigger brush. And these are the markers we're gonna use today. So this is just the uh, Prismacolor Scholar water-soluble uh, markers. And I do have Tombow and I've worked with those, but I'm gonna use the Tombow blending palette that goes with that. And I like to encourage people to use what you have. Use um, a combination of things. So I like the blending palette that I got from the Tombow set of markers, but I like to play with the quirkiness of the um, Prismacolor markers. The, the way they move is, is uh, something I'm, I'm attracted to with how it works with the paper and I can I can manipulate it a little bit differently than I can with some of the Tombow markers. So that's what we're going to play with today. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to begin to do the background. In the background I like to do in random color splotches and I take this blending palette and I just put random colors down. You can just see that I'm just grabbing whatever and I'm going to do a little light spray of the water and I'm going to just press that down onto the paper. Now you'll notice that little brown muddy part. I didn't really like that coloring, so what I decided to do is do it again. See what other colors that I could mix together. Do a real light spray. 
Ooh, that was interesting. So we're gonna move that around a little bit. Okay, so what I did there is I just blotted off the extra because there was a little bit of heavy water accumulation. And so you just take a paper towel and just blot that off. I really liked that. So now that once I've done this, I want to just let that dry completely because I really want to see how it dries. And I also want to kind of look at the different corners and does it make a difference how I look at it if I change the paper around in different directions. And what I finally decided is I kind of liked that heavy blue at the bottom. All right, the paper towel roll that I just showed you there has to do with, I, I like to have a paper towel so I can blot out the extra water from my brush. And then here I wanted to show you that just as a project that I've done before so that you can see from start to finish, this is a quick little brief, uh, another page from Artful Mandala where I did the background the exact same way and then I worked through different layers. And so this is kind of the idea of what we're moving toward is this kind of design. All right, so here we go. We're going to, we've let this dry a little bit and now I'm gonna to begin to paint. So I put a little bit of marker on the painting palette, add a little bit of water to my brush and you can see that I, I'm thinning it out just a little bit. And I'm just gonna pick a spot that I want to add a little bit more color to the background so that I have a little bit more interest or bringing out maybe some of those hues or tones that are, were left from our uh, background, um, experiment where we just put some colors down but just to see what it looks like when we begin to add a little bit more color to certain areas a little bit more definition now this kind of project here is not necessarily for the person that likes quick results this is for the person that is willing to spend some time to let the magic happen to really let it unfold because what happens is that even here we haven't even started to color anything in yet we're still working on the background this gentle space, this building of the background can be a very calming and relaxing place because there's, there's no definition of anything that's really happening when you're working on the background. You're really just sort of setting the tone, setting the mood of what's happening. So I decided just to start in the center, just to start to bring something in. And you'll notice that I go between adding markers straight to the paper and also adding marker to the blending palette. It kind of depends on how strong of an intensity that I want to add initially. But you'll notice that when you add markers straight to the paper, it's going to be very intense compared to what you've just done in the background where it's that diluted, watery feel, uh, a little bit more of a, a fantasy feel, that, that imagination. And one of the things that I really, really like about working with the markers this way is that I can move them around so I don't have to color in a whole area. I just need to add a little bit of color. And so here I'm just adding a little bit of color to the corners of places and then just bringing them in together, bringing them in towards the center. Sometimes that will do a natural shading, but it also allows me to just bring an area to life without having to use all of my markers. My markers actually last longer when I apply just a little bit and then use the water to move it around. So here I wanted to, to begin to add a little bit more of a punch of color because everything seemed a little light to me when I was working this way and I needed something to kind of guide my eye as I was beginning to build my layers. The other thing with the gesso is that sometimes it kind of erases some of the lines and you'll notice that there are some places where I almost take a guess as to where the shape was that was. Uh, and that's okay because it adds a little bit of magic to the unfolding of what something begins to look at, look like. So you'll also notice I work in sections. And I do a pattern all the way around. It's very similar to how when I'm doing my meditative drawing, I work in an area and I don't rush through it. I actually just let it unfold one little part of the pattern at a time so that I can begin to see what does it look like if I do just this. 
and I want my markers to be fairly wet so I did only small little sections I didn't add the marker to the paper around the whole circle and then wet it all because my first one and my last one are going to be drying at different times so I did just little sections at a time So here we're just going to add more colors and begin to fill in this space. And the thing with when you're adding colors is that I wanted to consider the colors that were in the background. And so I'm adding a lot of the same colors from the background into my actual design itself so that I can begin to pull out places of interest as they begin to develop and begin to uh, add on to each other. I like the brightness that yellow can bring to uh, colors. I also like that when you layer it, sometimes it can lighten or brighten an area. And because this is being sped up, because it took hours to work at you know these tiny little spaces and and it's just it's it's just one of those places where you just sort of let yourself fall into a moment a moment of creativity and and what's nice about working with the um, markers this way with the water-based markers is that when I'm applying them with my brush and I'm painting them on, they're very light. They're not that bold, direct to the paper color, which means that if I don't like something, I can actually layer over it. And that's kind of neat because that means that I still have creativity in my layering process as it moves through its, its unfolding. So here's another example. We're adding just a little bit of the water-based marker to the leaves, but not coloring them all in. Just I wanted just to have a hint of color so I could start to see how this is gonna come together. Later on, I, I make a decision about making it a little bit bolder and a little bit darker, and, and there's some pros and cons to working with light, uh, lighter layers. The lighter layers will definitely allow you to layer more, allow you to see something uh, come to life in a, in a very different way. And it also, it, um, it lets you kind of be with the shape also. You can decide as to whether that shape is going to be something that needs a little bit more oomph or whether it's something that's okay that it kind of fades into the background. When I do the white gesso over the coloring book page, it, it does absorb some of the color and you'll notice that as the marker moves into it, it almost has a faded out. And you'll start to see as my colors get more and more onto the page, those streaks, those lines of where the sponge applied the gesso you can start to see whether it's side to side or up and down depending on depending on which way we're looking at the image. And it's just adding texture. If you don't want that kind of texture, again, you want to do something that is going to provide a real smooth application, which could mean that you dilute it down even further, add a little bit more water before you do the gesso and do two or more layers. And again, you want to use the clear if you don't want to have uh, any of the white. But if you want texture, white is actually kind of fun because you can start to see it. You can do that with clear too, but a lot of times the white is what people use. Again, you'll notice that I use, except towards the very end, I use this tiny little brush for everything. And it's almost like using when you're doing your colored pencils. The, the colored pencil, this is a very similar feeling to doing the colored pencil, except for I think the color moves a lot faster and you can blend a lot differently. But it's, um, it's a small point. And so you're really being present for every layer and, and every connection that you add. And again, you'll notice that 
I do small sections, moving the colors around just to kind of see how do they come together, what changes. And these flowers here, I, it's real interesting. I was kind of hoping they would be a little bit brighter or a little bit more bold in the color, but that white gesso really kind of sucked up the color. And so it didn't really give me uh, the brightness that I was looking for, but, but it still created a definition of space and that was okay. That I can, at least it, it gave me something I could watch unfold and decide what I wanted to do with that later. What's nice about these watercolor markers also is that you can put two down and kind of blend them together at the same time. And it does a real nice um, blending, real nice blending effect. So here you notice I wanted it a little bit darker. And I really wanted just to have that definition of color. So I just went straight for putting the marker onto those petals there. And, and I liked the way that that orange, and I'm adding a little bit of yellow here on the top. I like the way that orange made the blue pop out and the blue kind of has a conversation with the orange, begins to have that pop out a little bit. And here we're just adding a tiny little bit in the corners, begin to create definition. Again, moving in, in small sections. I, I like to have small sections so I have control over how wet the marker is when it's being put down. And you'll notice those first ones are already uh, sort of fading out, beginning to uh, look lighter because of the way the white gesso is onto that paper. And what I like about this is that it gives that real watercolor look to it. I mean, we are in essence kind of working with watercolor, only it's more in a liquid form as opposed to a dry powder form. Um, but there is there is that sort of feeling of uh, watercolor because you're moving it around. You're moving it around and when it dries, it puddles. And so you end up with these darker definitions and lighter definitions of different areas. So here we're moving on to some darker definitions of green. I, I really wanted something that was going to be a much more strong uh, placement of color because I knew that once I saw how the blue and the oranges were coming, I was going to need some on the outside. Something was going to bring it a little bit more into uh, uh, a little bit more lifelike in the way colors move um, from one place to another. Something would create a little bit more dynamics. However, I didn't want it to be too hard. So what I did is, is I basically kind of smeared it around. I just uh, drew on the paper and then I kind of took my little brush and I just sort of smeared it around. So it would just kind of soften that into the background. So you have this color impression. And for some people, that I guess that might look a little messy, but it can get muddy if you do that too much. Um, I really wanted uh, to begin to play and see, well, how do these move? You know, how do, they, how do they look if I begin to create something that's a strong definition, but then sort of soften that a little bit? Um, am I gonna like that? Well, I decided that I won't really know until I begin to see it all the way around. So I had to kind of finish the pattern at that point and just sort of smearing it around, taking that and moving it into the background a little bit. Here is something I want you to keep in mind. If you get inspired to bring out an area, what's really cool about the watercolor markers is that you can just add it immediately right into that space. I love just sort of having the background all of a sudden ask for attention and then you just begin to add a little yellow to the background, bring, bring a little definition to a space, ha have it uh, glow, have it just begin to uh, have a life of its own so that it begins to move in that space. Sometimes adding things to the background creates this place of um, harmony where things begin to soften and you begin to enjoy the space a little bit more. It, it's, it adds warmth or coolness depending on what area that you're looking at or what you're working on. You know, sometimes things just kind of call to you and so you just, you just move with that. That's what I love about certain art projects. Is sometimes these art projects, it's not about perfection. You don't have to do it a certain way. You just, you just follow. You just follow what the, what the page tells you. Sometimes the tools give you an inclination to, to use them in a different way and it's not something you would have thought about until that moment, but you won't know unless you start to play. 
Okay, so now we're cruising along here. We're going to add some background. This is where I really like to start to see things come alive. There's this, uh, it's almost like a sunrise or sunset, this, this blending of colors that begins to move where um, you almost want to see that brightness of color before it fades into gray or before it moves into the, the blue sky of a regular day. And so there's this space where you begin to just um, add uh, accentuating places of color, places where um, you're, it's like you're drawn, you're drawn to an area and you just want to add a little bit more to that space. And sometimes that really begins to change things. That opens up a space. It adds definition. It it uh, it acknowledges it. Sometimes just adding a little bit of color kind of acknowledges a space, and and that can change how you feel about something. I'm sure you've had that in your own house, where maybe you have a favorite spot that you like to sit in, and. It's like the more that you give attention to that spot, it's just like the more favorite it, of, you know, all your spaces that it becomes. It just, it has an energy to it at that point. And uh, that's nice. That's nice to have, you know, and to acknowledge your own power and that you can do that. That you can create places that are your favorite, whether it's in art or in life or favorite place that you like to walk or mug that you drink out of, you know, what's the process that makes it your favorite? Why? You know, what what are you doing that acknowledges these things that make them your favorite? For me, I really like working with this medium. I know I've done a lot of stuff with colored pencils, but there's something about this medium that I find very um, loose. It doesn't have to be perfect. I love that it doesn't have to be perfect. I love that if I make a mistake, I can still continue to layer. I can play with uh, with color, I can play with design, I can let the colors talk to each other. They, you know, they, they don't have to be separate. They can actually move into each other and create a whole new color and and that's nice. That's, that's I think when you begin to follow your intuition and you begin to trust yourself and, and you just start to see how things unwind and unfold. And I know I've said that before but I mean it. You know, you just sort of trust those spaces and you just play with them. Yeah, so the back, I was curious, you know, how much of this has gone through? There was a little bit. Well, obviously that just had to do with how much gesso I applied and where I didn't apply it and the color went through, but paper's holding up. I mean, there's lots of layering that's going on with what? With water, with this wet, wet medium. I just love how there's this blending of colors. I just love the magic of that. And I can go back and make it as dark or as light as I want. And blending these colors, you know, just letting them overlap. And we'll see, you know, what does it look like? What do they do? What do they do when they move? So here, adding this real dark blue I wanted a little bit more definition of this, the inner circle space, so I just decided just to draw, and, and then I wanted the corners to speak a little bit more, and so I begin to add colors that, that move and, and define and create shape and space. I just, I love the way the oranges are glowing, especially near those blues. If you know anything about color theory, there's a couple of colors that kind of come in pairs that work really well to make each other pop out. And blue and orange are really great for that. If they're next to each other, if you overlap them, they'll become a little bit more brown. Same thing happens with purple and yellow. If you're next to each other, I mean, you think of like a, the, an iris. You know, a lot of those irises, they have those wonderful purple petals and then a, a yellow splash of yellow and if they're next to each other they really support each other and then a third pair if you ever are interested in exploring that is the colors of red and green if they're next to each other they really you know stand out but if you begin to 
overlap them, they, they kind of muddy up a little bit, which you can use for shaded areas. You can use that for shadowing if you, if you want to. I mean, it's just plain with color, right? The very end here, I was looking at, uh, you know, the edges of, not the end, but the edges of these colors, and it's like, I forgot there's a little, little flower here at the very end, and I wanted to bring that out. So you notice that I go, <laughs> you can see my, my cardboard paper there that if I'm using my yellow markers or my light colored markers near a dark color, I always try to uh, clear the tip onto a paper towel so that it doesn't continue to absorb that other color. And then when I go to open it up and use it again, I'm, I'm, I've got blue on my yellow. So I always, you'll notice all those little scribble marks over there on the, on the paper towel that the, uh, what I'm doing is, is I'm cleaning I'm cleaning the end of the uh, yellow marker because I, I want it to stay yellow because they will absorb. You can actually use that to your advantage. You can actually get some of these water-based markers to touch each other and use that as a blending tool uh, on your paper. I believe I have a video that talks about that. You can go watch that sometime. What's nice about adding colors to the background is that they don't have to be in any shape. <laughs> It's almost like you're adding clouds to an area. You know, you don't, they don't have to be a shape. They don't have to fit into anything in particular. They, you can really see, you know, with a zoomed in, you can really start to see where those textures and the lines of the gesso. And, and to me, I find that interesting. It doesn't bother me. I don't, I don't have to have things completely smoothed out because I'm not invested in it being a particular way. It doesn't have to have a, a particular look to, uh, to be interesting. Sometimes the interesting things happen when, when you have that unpredictable quality of you know, not knowing what something looks like. So here I actually grabbed one of my brown markers and, and just decided I wanted a little bit of definition on the edge of this uh, diamond and by doing that I actually sort of erased some of that little decorative uh, black guidelines of those little swirlies on this other side and I figured I was just gonna have to wing it if I wanted to play with those later and wasn't sure at that point if I was gonna use those or not it might have been something that just stayed in the background but here you'll notice I also changed to a different brush decided I was going to add a little bit of brown around the outside edge of the circle. I, I wanted a little bit of a shaded look and, and really didn't go into as much as I could have to create more of a 3D effect where you begin to create shapes where they pop out so that you can definitely see layers upon layers. Uh, this is pretty minimal just so that that circle has a, a little bit of a shadow and moves it up off of the background a little bit. But that tiny little bit did make a difference. I added a little bit of that brown marker also on the edge of the leaves just so that they would have a little definition. I added a little yellow to the leaves. I don't know if it brightened it as much as I would have liked, but it, it you yeah, know, it just moved on. That's the other thing too, is, is knowing when to move on because my, my husband calls it noodling. If you continue to noodle something for too long, you, you lose the magic of what's happening and sometimes you can just muddy stuff up and it just kind of dissolves its potential. So sometimes it's really learning just when to let something go, move on to the next space. I really liked adding some of these oranges and yellows to the background. I, I really liked that brightening up of certain spaces. I really liked the, it almost had sort of a Spanish feel to me, this um, Mexican feel. I don't know, there's something a little Latin in the colors, but wanted to add a little bit definition. So I decided just to grab my pen. You know, this is just a pilot pen, nothing fancy the one I've signed my books with when I've done book signings. It's just, you know, pen that you draw with, pen that you sign with. 
and I could have actually done every line in black to define it and in essence it would almost be like redrawing the image uh, which I think would have been fine I actually think bringing all that black definition uh, would have been okay but I decided I wasn't gonna do that and I added a few little lines here and there that weren't actually in the original drawing and just added some interest and what I find is that black sometimes gives a place for your eyes to rest it defines certain shapes and sometimes you can color things in just to give a sort of resting spot from the dynamics of what's going on with color so black can actually be your friend whether you use it a lot or a little it's it's a color color of interest so there were these tiny little designs that were almost completely faded out from the gesso and the, and the colors in the background, but I could still make them out. So I decided I was gonna color those in and bring them back forward by just coloring them in. And at this point, I still hadn't decided whether I wanted to use those little swirlies that were on the outside of this diamond and I was still kind of thinking about it every time I moved the, the paper around. Is that something that I want to do? And now that I'm seeing it move around in different locations, I'm looking at that dark blue, and I, I liked it at the bottom right-hand corner, but now seeing it flip, it almost reminds me of water, like the ocean or a lake or something when it's in the bottom left-hand corner. Now I'm going to have to go back and see. Maybe I like it better that way. We'll see. Might have to go and change my, my viewing image of it. And as you can see, I decided I was going to add the little swirlies. And at the very last one, I couldn't see all of them, so I had to make some up. Looked at the back, held up pretty good. So the image came from the Artful Mandala coloring book. And there's one of the examples. So you can see that we can get, you know, some really nice results that are unpredictable, that are playful, that are vibrant. Um, by just playing, by just playing with color. There you go, now you've seen a project from start to finish on one of your coloring pages. And now you can go and prepare any one of your pages from your coloring books and do the same thing. Until next time, I'm Cher Kaufman from The Drawing Desk. May you find more color in your day.